Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure at Deep Adventure Ministries. We believe that the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. You know, when I pray for my wife every day, I always say, I always pray the prayer. I think I learned it from Napoleon Dynamite, actually. <laughs> <laughs> when the guy that was running for president of the high school class said, if you vote for him, your wildest dreams will come true. But I do. I pray for my wife that her wildest dreams will come true because the Lord plants in our hearts new and right desires. And he has a he has a uh, beautiful plan for your life. We'll be right back with the Bear Wozniak adventure. Guess what? We have Bishop Strickland with us. So we're, we're stoked about that. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. You know what's cool about being Catholic, you guys, is, is it's just so cool, especially uh, when you think about, we have with us today Bishop Strickland, I'm going to introduce him in just a moment, but when you think about the, the apostolic succession within the Catholic Church, that every bishop has been laid hands on by a bishop who was laid hands on by a bishop all the way back to Jesus Christ. And every Catholic has been, been baptized by a priest or, or by someone that you can actually know that if you go all the way back down that line, the person that's touching you is a line of people touching people all the way back to Jesus. And that's why the Catholic Church is not an organization. It's an organism. It's the living body of Christ, and it's the bride of Christ. And uh, we're, we're the longest existing organization in the world, but we're much more than that. And so it's... It's just really an honor and a privilege to have with us today Bishop Strickland from the, the Bishop for Tyler, Texas, that, that area of, of Texas. Aloha, Bishop. Aloha, Bear. Thank you for being with us. You know, I just, I just, um, you know, I live, I went to college at Baylor in, in Waco, oh. Texas, and That's all these. Not too uh, far out of our diocese. <laughs> all the Baptists there were praying for me to be converted. <laughs> And they, they went away one summer, and when I came back, I had experienced this mighty infusion of the Holy Spirit and the Catholic Charismatic Renewal back in those days. And so they didn't know what to do with me. I went from one, from one, they were, now they were praying me to calm down a little bit. But <laughs> I, I, loved my, I loved my my four years of, of living in Texas and uh, the hospitality that I experienced there. And I love Texans. Um, but so welcome to the show. Thank you, Bear. I want to know, ask you this one question right off that bat. What are you? What is this thing you've got against uh, cars? <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually love cars, and I guess that's part of the problem. What you allude to is um, when I was in high school, uh, not too long before I entered the seminary, because I entered the seminary straight out of public high school, Atlanta, Texas, graduated at 18 and entered the seminary the next fall. It was either my senior year or maybe my junior year, but I was definitely driving. Um, got my license immediately at si on my 16th birthday. Uh, it surprises me that young people I know here in town now, they wait. They, they don't, I mean, it's like, what? I was with, I mean, I was literally on my birthday getting my license. Absolutely. But anyway, yeah. the, um, the adventure that I shared with you earlier was we lived out in the country and so we would have cars that were not exactly in great working order um, and we tried to get them back in working order what this incident was was a car that had been sitting there in the field um, under a tree for quite a while and i managed to get it started so i was all excited that this car was back functioning I was just using it in the field, driving on the, you know, sort of the cow path that we had. That yeah, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and the best I can figure is during that dormant time for this car, some critter, <laughs> I don't know what critter, but some critter had built a nest oh, no. in, the, in the carburetor area. So 
I'm driving it down the the cow path, like you said, what harm could could happen, but it it caught on fire. Um, and so I confessed, I I think panicked would be the proper word because I'm I don't really remember too clearly, but I'm not absolutely sure that I should have been trying to start this car and get it running. Um, I certainly didn't have permission to do that. And uh, so the car burst into flames the under the hood, the engine area. And in my panic, um, I did try to, to put it out, but it was already far enough. You know, that nest that caught mm. on fire was pretty good kindling for <laughs> starting a fire. A little gasoline to add to that. So it was a pretty good fire even by the time I opened the hood. So... I ran up to the house, which was probably, you know, I was down in the field, probably a couple hundred yards away at least. Um, so I ran up to the house and my father said, call the fire department. I honestly hesitated <laughs> to do that and that didn't please my father. So we did finally call the fire department. They got there and the uh, the car pretty well was consumed um it it burned to a crisp basically so like the, the fire field. department kind of arrived a little bit too late to save it right <laughs> yeah they kept it from spreading anywhere else but the car was done for um my father wasn't really upset about the car because it obviously wasn't in too good a shape anyway but um it was an incident that i definitely remember and thankfully i've never had a car that I was driving, I've, I've been known of cars catching on fire and other circumstances, <laughs> but I wasn't driving it. So that's the only time. So it didn't, it didn't scar can... you for the rest of your life? No, no. It, okay, it, so, uh, so I'm, I'm thinking about the, the, when the film is made of, the, of your life, <laughs> you're, you're panning in close and uh, you're walking away from this car the way Bruce Willis does when there's a bomb exploding in the background, that would be the opening scene. Yeah. Well, that's Hollywood can do a lot of things because I, I confess I wasn't walking. I was running. Yeah, no, you got to be more casual. You got to be more casual. <laughs> yeah. Run the first 50 feet and then start walking. But um, yeah, I know the I, the fact like that's cool, though, that you are you're out there and you're you're uh, we encourage young people today to get outside and do stuff, get in a little bit of trouble. You know, my kids, you know how they learn how to drive was over in the island of Molokai. Or St. Damien, St. Marianne, right? Really? Uh, yeah. yeah, there's I no have, stoplight. I have a chance to visit there. You, you, you've been there? Yeah. Oh, no kidding. When was that? A um, couple of years ago. Some wow. fellow bishops and I and a, and a priest friend that was celebrating his anniversary, we all went, and your bishop there in uh, Hawaii was very welcoming, Bishop Larry. And uh, we actually rode on, on some of those more or less cow path. I don't. I don't think I saw it's any a donkey cows, path. Donkey some path. Some kind of donkey. some kind of mule road. Yeah. yeah, mules. Yeah, that um, were there. So yeah. Did you I ride the there. mules down then? No, no, we didn't do that. Uh, but we did uh, ride the car around, and one of the sisters kind of oh, showed us the the different spots there on the island. You know, so, I've been down yeah. that 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 steep cliff many times, and the yeah. Molokai is known for having the high, highest sea cliffs in the world. And my dad was actually a deacon there in the island for a while. Really? Yeah. Hmm. And so, but I just know oh, I always knew if I was going to go hike down to the to Molokai, uh, leave early because the mules leave about eight thirty, and you want to be ahead of the mules because they leave little presents all the way along the, yeah, yeah, the road. Sure. So, but yeah, I've I'm, actually I'm never aware of those presents. They were cow presents, but. <laughs> Same kind of present, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's like uh, I, I've never actually been to the colony. I've been down there, but you have to have to permission to proceed. And the one time that I was taking a group there, we had, like, really bad weather, so we had to cancel everything. But I'll, st I'll still make it there. But that's where I taught my children to uh, to drive, or they taught themselves. Because that's a great no place to learn. That's what I learned on the same cow path with a truck, actually, just an old farm truck. That's how I learned to drive. A lot of young people, even when I was in seminary, I had a standard shift car that I borrowed from one of my brothers, and nobody could drive it. Yeah, what's so that? I didn't what's have that? to let them borrow it because they yeah. didn't know how to drive it. <laughs> I don't even know if they exist. Well, I guess they still exist, yeah. but Yeah, you can no. special order a standard. 
But living on living on the farm, I, every time I come across a great golfer, he's go, "Oh yeah, I was raised on a farm," and they hit these long drives because they have lots of lots of room. I guess there's some some hazards out there that we don't normally see on the yeah. on the golf course. I guess we're talking with Bishop Strickland, and we're gonna get a get a chance to learn a little bit about his own uh, path towards um, his, his journey with the Lord, and then we're gonna talk story with him about. It's, what is God saying to men today, and is specifically what is the Lord saying to us about the domestic church and the importance of the domestic church? We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is Daniel the Boone Markham with another episode of Country Up Fear. Years ago, during the midnight of my soul, I considered ending it all. My pain was serious hard to bear. Two things kept me going from self-propelling myself across the Grim Reaper's Bridge to Eternity. Concern for my children, and two, well, number two was the fear of God. When the love of God doesn't convince you, the fear of God will keep you. I loved my daddy, and my daddy loved me, but it was a healthy fear of my daddy that kept me from doing wrong. The prospect of my daddy's raw hide and meaty hand applied to my posterior was a mite troubling. I didn't fear daddy. I feared his hand, and that was a good thing. He never injured me, just applied the right amount of motivation where it was needed. I enjoy God's love daily, repeatedly. It feeds me, it comforts me, it warms me from harming myself and others and keeps me out of trouble. His rod protects me from the enemy and disciplines me while his staff guides and rescues. Folks don't like hearing about the fear of God. In fact, enlightened folks, so-called, think such fear is primitive religion or superstition. Folks like the shepherd's staff that rescues, but not so much the rod that is to be feared. Yes, fear means awe and respect, but it also means fear. Daddy's discipline only needed to be applied now and then. One episode left a lasting impression. Yet I had his companionship, protection, provision, and love every day. Isaiah prophesied that Christ would delight in the fear of the Lord. Since Jesus did so, seems to me we should be mindful of doing the same. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. Hey man. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN, and you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff, and if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to shout out to the mama bears out there. We really love you and we appreciate you. Uh, you know, you're the women that when, when Cindy and I go into Mass, um, you're there before we even get there. And you're praying the rosary. And quite often you're the ones that are alone in the, in the pew. Uh, you're the warriors. You're the real warriors. We know that our ministry kind of runs on your prayers. 
and our, we have a real heart for you, and we want to let you know that we, our prayers are for you too. And you can uh, don't think that because this is a men's ministry that you don't have a role. I know a lot of women think, thank, thankfully, there's a ministry now that reaches men in a way that's manly and that they can relate to. Um, and so we have different ways that you can use, you can use our videos and things to kind of sneakily uh, get, communicate these to your men. And so go to our website, deepadventure.com, and uh, there's a uh, place there where you can be, be, become one of our mama bears. This is a, a great, uh, great, great blessing for us to have Bishop Strickland with us here. He's the bishop in the area of Tyler, Texas. Is that still considered the heart of Texas? I know Waco. Well, was. it's the northeastern heart. It's way up <laughs> uh, on almost to Oklahoma and Louisiana. It's right up in the northeastern corner. Okay, so it would be the right ventricle or something. I don't know. But, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I know moving from Santa Cruz, California to Texas <laughs> to landlocked Texas, it was, it was just so hard. You know, uh, I wanted to ask you about. You said at the age of, you at the age of eighteen, you already were on the way to the seminary. When did you? Have you experienced first of all of, of being drawn to the Lord? Was that something that you were that you just had your whole life? And when did you sense that that draw to become a, a priest? Well, pretty much in the high school years, I would say. Um, I grew up in a in a family that was Catholic, where very few others were Catholic. Very rural area, very small town, five thousand people in Atlanta, Texas, and. Of those 5,000, maybe 50 Catholics. Um, that probably not quite that many. But anyway, the family I grew up in, my mother was a cradle Catholic, Irish Catholic from Australia. Oh, my really? Father, oh, yeah. Wow, that's cool. My father was an East Texas Southern Baptist who converted to the Catholic faith after they were married about 10 years. So. We grew up in a family, and I've said this many times in many settings, that being Catholic was the best thing we had. That's just sort of was was fed to us, and it, it just pervaded what we did. We went to Mass. There was no question. We were very involved in the little mission church that my parents actually helped develop there. When we moved, I've told the story before, when we moved to Atlanta, Texas, when I was about four, the my mother's when my father said we had this hundred acres that my father was they wanted to build a house on and when my father said we were moving there my mother's first question was do they have a church and my father said they will um wow. because he knew that was a deal breaker for my mother if we didn't have a catholic church to attend she was going to drag her heels on going there he said we will and so my parents literally became involved in, in establishing the little mission there where my first memory of going to Mass, um, and it's so interesting because people my age, I'm 62, many people remember the Latin Mass and they were little kids. I have no memory of it because my first memory of going to Mass was in the City Hall of Atlanta, Texas. The City Hall, the city allowed us to, as a small Catholic community, to use the city hall for Sunday mass. And so we had Glen Mary priests that as missionaries, I presume they must have embraced the changes as early as they could. Um, but I have no memory of the Latin mass. And I remember thinking they, everybody folded up the altar and put it away after mass. <laughs> you know, I, I, that was my experience. I have a similar memory. I was raised, uh, I'm older than you, so when I became an altar boy, I learned all the Latin, and then I think within three months they changed it to English, but I, I loved uh, being able to, to say all those, and Father Kelly was so wonderful for, uh, for us over at the church we went to, but then they planted a church in our little town we called Coralitas there in the uh, Monterey County area, and it was the Grange Hall where we had mass, setting up folding chairs and, yeah. I mean, what do you, how could it be a mass if there's not a basketball hoop? <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know the thing is, is for, so so how as as that developed, did you just always know you were going to be a priest, or how did how did that? No, really, I wasn't one of those kids that played at being a priest. It didn't occur to me to do that. You weren't, you weren't um, Athanasius then. No, no. Um, but really in high school, uh, as they started talking to us, probably late junior high and then into high school, they started 
in the public high school started talking about, you need to start thinking about what you want to do, what you want to study so that you can choose the right things as you're mm. choosing, you know, the electives in high school. And you knew you shouldn't so, be, you shouldn't work on cars. You had figured that out already. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, so I began to think about it there. And really, Bear, I have to say the Eucharist, the, the Blessed Sacrament in that little church that we did build a church ultimately and not really that much longer. It, it really was remarkable how quickly um, the Catholic Extension Society, which is based in Chicago, I always remember, I've told the people at Catholic Extension, there's a plaque in the church where I grew up, like many churches, that says funded by or supported by Catholic Extension. Wow. I remember seeing Praise that God. as a kid. Yeah. Um, so I went to Mass in this little mission church. It's now a parish in the diocese where I serve. And I would go there and pray. Um, mm. As we lived out in the country, as I already said, so after football practice or after the, my, or before I was going, anytime I was kind of in between school and practice or school and going to my part-time job, I would often walk. Thankfully, the church was within a, a mile or so of wherever I was at football or whatever. So I would walk over to the church and pray uh, in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament. Oh. It was, frankly, probably a way to kill time. But for whatever reasons, I mean, nobody told me, go pray in the church. It was just something that as a Catholic kid, I thought that's a good thing to do. So and beautiful. I really believe that that is where the seeds of my vocation were nurtured. I've always had a devotion to the Blessed Sacrament. Mm -hmm. Even when I was ordained in 1985, in those years, in the years I was in the seminary, it was much less emphasized than it is now to have Eucharistic adoration. And and we did have, in the seminary I went to, we always had benediction. We called it Benicomp, mm. benediction and compline, benediction mm. and night prayer mm. every Sunday night. They wow. still do in that seminary, Holy Trinity and Irving um, associated with the University of Dallas. But... I've always had a devotion to the Blessed Sacrament, and since I became bishop, that has just exploded. I mean, it has just sort of taken over my life mm -hmm. um, because there's so, it's so heartbreaking that so many Catholics don't really believe and certainly don't believe deeply mm -hmm. and don't make that a real focus of their Catholic faith. But thankfully, that's how I grew up, and... It's just been nurtured through the years of that devotion that Christ is really present, body and blood, soul and divinity. Mm -hmm. That real presence is the very heart of our faith. As the documents of the Second Vatican Council say, I mean, the, the, the source and the summit of Catholic life is the Eucharist. And that certainly means the Mass, but it also means His Eucharistic presence. And so I really believe that in one of my favorite um, apparitions, you might say, or it's actually just a vision that I think St. John Bosco had of the church in a storm with one pillar is the Eucharist and the other pillar is the Blessed Virgin Mary. Mm. We're in a storm mm -hmm. and those two pillars are the anchors we have to hang on to for dear life. You know, uh, during this, uh, by the way, my house is right next to the Catholic Church. If I could, if you could look straight down, I'm looking right down at the altar. I'm up on the 25th floor. The altar is right there. But during this pandemic, you know, we would pray every. Well, I do. A, I do an open. I do a Facebook Live catechism every morning on my Bear Wasn't Deep Adventure fan page on Facebook, and uh, and we would we moved it to be right at the church door, and we laid hands on that door and prayed the rosary after each of those catechisms. That would be open because people would say, "Well, you know, you can worship God anywhere. You can worship in the ocean. You can worship Him. Um, you know, you can get together in people's living living room. Well, you can't get together in people's living rooms, but back. But they were saying, you don't need to go to church to worship the Lord. But as Catholics, so uh, profoundly different because yeah. it's it's only at Mass." 
uh, that we received the Eucharist. So we, we laid hands on that door and continued to pray until, until they opened up the church again. We're talking with Bishop Strickland, the bishop in Tyler, Texas. We're going to talk a little bit more when we get back. Uh, we have the bishop talk story with us about uh, what God is saying to men and, and what he's saying about the domestic church when we come back. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is Bear Wozniak coming to you from my home in Waikiki Beach. I'm looking across the channel past Diamond Head in the background and then across that channel is the Molokai uh, channel. It's about 27 miles wide and I used to have a home in Molokai. You know the home of St. Damien and St. Mary Ann. My father was a deacon there but I would sit at my home in Molokai and I'd look across that channel, the Kiavi channel, I go you know what I could paddle that thing on my tandem surfboard. People do it on special kind of paddle boards, outrigger canoes, stand-up paddle boards. Back then no one was stand-up paddling. But I thought, I can do that. And of course, the minute you say, I could do that, it gnaws on you. It just gnaws on you. So I scheduled a time. I made a, I made a, made an appointment date on my calendar to make that paddle. I got up about four in the morning. So when I left Molokai, I was up in, it was in the middle of the night. But I had set my compass on my surfboard. And when I looked at my compass, it was pointing directly at the full moon that was setting on its way to setting into Diamond Head Crater. Uh, once I lay down on the board, I couldn't see the crater, but I could see uh, the full moon, and I followed that moon. I followed my compass. I followed the course. In our lives, sometimes we lose our way. And it's important just to keep going and going. You know, the thing about it, when I pedaled my bicycle across the United States, when I paddled my outrigger, my, my surfboard, 27 miles across the Molokai Channel. The whole key to that was one pedal stroke at a time on my bicycle, one paddle stroke at a time on my surfboard. As soon as you enter into an adversity, you're on your way out. The key is to set your compass, to follow God's will, to stay the course. And as soon as you enter into a, uh, the desert, you're on your way out the other side. So stay the course, follow the true setting that you have in the Catechism of the Catholic Church and the Sacraments. This is Bear Wozniak from DeepAdventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bears Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We uh, want to let you know that we have opportunity for you to see Long Ride Home. It's the motorcycle TV show that's been uh, terrorizing people on EWTN. When I asked the executives there, so what do people say about our motorcycle show? Well, we haven't gotten any hate mail. You know, they're just so concerned because it's because it's so different. But I think that Mother Angelica just takes delight in our motorcycle show. And a lot of men have come to the Lord because uh, their wives have kind of turned on the TV when Long Ride Home was on. Well, now, just to let you know, you can watch Long Ride Home on Prime Video. We have the first two seasons are, are up already on, on, long, on uh, Prime Video. And uh, if you would like to... Go to deepadventure.com and you can become a patron, uh, either the Mama Bear or the Become a Man Cave member. 
and then we send you all the episodes of Long Ride Home as soon as they're done. So sometimes that's nine months before they're even aired on EWT, and we, we send you the director's cut, and we send you the video version of our EWTN radio show. So if you want to see Bishop Strickland, uh, uh, you know, you can... Uh, you don't have. You can see the video version. That's a YouTube version, but we send it to you on Saturday mornings. If you're a Patreon subscriber, you get it about six weeks early. So, go to our website, deepadventure.com, and we want to invite the men. Men need to be with other men. There's no such thing as a lone ranger in the in the church. Uh, and the man cave is a secret Facebook group. You can't join it by going to Facebook. You got to go to our website and join the man cave. But we have we have men there that we're all knuckle draggers, we're all misfits, we're all like the kind of men that showed up at the cave of Adullam, you know, David's cave, that were misfits. I think they're running from the law, or I say maybe their mother-in-law, or maybe they owed money or something, but God formed those men, they formed each other, and God formed them into the valiant army of King David. And so, you know, if, if you feel like you're a misfit, or if you feel like you don't belong, then then welcome to the Bears Man Cave, because that's that's where we're all hanging out. And we have a Zoom video meetup about every couple of weeks, but the men just share things and, and, and encourage each other. We do Novenas together. We get on fitness kicks together. It's all the, all there at the Man Cave. And then a lot of the men there have started their own men's groups. So uh, join us there. You can find all that at our website, deepadventure.com. Bishop Strickland, I was reading um, the Liturgy of the Hours this morning with my wife. We usually sneak down. She's desperate without coffee in the morning, and I'm annoyingly energetic first thing, although I get up a couple hours earlier usually. but So we go down to Kai Coffee, and we do our morning liturgy the, with the Magnificat. This was the, this was the reading today from Deuteronomy. Take these words of mine into your heart and soul. Bind them at your, bind them at your wrist as a sign, and let them be a pendant on your forehead. And then this is what I love. Teach them to your children. Speaking of them at home and abroad, whether you are busy or at rest, and write them on the doorposts of your houses and on your gates. And then it goes on to say, you and your children may live long in the land, sworn to your fathers who would give them. Talk to us about the importance of men uh, laying down their lives in servant leadership in their homes and and, and um, and creating that domestic, helping with their wife to create that domestic church. Well, absolutely, Bear. I think that is a challenge of our time, especially for men to man up, to be real men, and to not shy away from that uh, in a culture that says, oh, oh, you know, don't do that, but to be men, because real men are sacrificial, they're loving, they're kind, they're um, humble, they're always ready to put the other person first. I was raised by a real man, and we grew up in, in a southern kind of home with the idea that we, uh, that southern gentility of being a, a man was to open the door for the woman to stand for the woman when she came in the room to to treat women as sacred, which we all are. That enhances our sacredness as men. And really, Bear, what I would point every man and woman that's listening to, uh, to Jesus Christ and to his passion. If you really, just the way of the cross, which is, is many people do the stations, pray the stations of the cross during Lent. Let's really think about what that depicts. Beginning with the condemnation, Jesus is condemned by whom? By Pilate, by the Sanhedrin, by the Jewish, by the religious and state leaders of his day. He was condemned to death. And then he begins the journey of the cross. I would encourage men and the women who love them to really focus on that human experience. Um, I love the movie, uh, The Passion of the Christ. I actually watched it on Ash Wednesday because in a very unusual situation, we were snowed in on Ash Wednesday. Mm -hmm. I literally got on Broadway, which is the main drag in our town, and made it halfway to 
to the Chancery, which is only a three mile drive from my house, but there were police blocking the road. And so I had to turn around and go home. But during, on Ash Wednesday, cause I had a little time on my hands, I watched The Passion of the Christ again. It's very graphic, but probably pretty realistic. And when, when they are pounding the nails into the hands of Jesus Christ, nailing him to the cross, that is very real. And one detail that is in that movie, that as a kid growing up and, and nailing things together, mostly fence posts, but what they did in that movie, if you remember, is they nailed the nails through his hand and then turned it over, <laughs> turned the cross yeah, over, yeah. and nail and nailed the, the point of the, the nail, pounded it down so that it was more or less pounded back into the wood, you know, bending it over. So it wouldn't fall out, right? Yeah. yeah. And I knew exactly what, I mean, we did that all the time mm -hmm. with something you were nailing together. You you secured it by nailing the other end of the nail and, and, and bending it down. That is a real event that a real man of flesh and blood actually experienced. If that's not manly, I don't know what is. And in the context, like you said, of, of making a sacrifice, Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God. He was nailed to that cross, that tree, in sacrifice. That's what men have to really conjure up in their own hearts when they go to Mass, offer the, the, the pain they're having with their boss or the struggles they're having financially, or maybe even the challenges they're facing with the woman that they love that is their wife or their children, whatever the struggles, bring that to the altar because that's what Christ brought to his altar of sacrifice. As we say in the mass, the night before he died, that really bear, we've got to embrace what we say at mass, what we pray at mass and, and make it real. The night before he died, he's giving us his body and blood, soul and divinity. He would pour himself out blood and water gushing forth as the soldier pierces his side with a lance. We've got to make that real. We've got to embrace it with our imagination. We've got to really say this man of about 33 years old of Mideastern origin, a member of the Jewish family, he died on a cross and with everything that that means. And it inspires me and it, it inspires any man or woman to recognize that, I mean, what, it, what occurs to me as I reflect on that bear is how minimal, how small are my sacrifices? I mean, Jesus says, you must take up your cross and follow him if you want to be his disciple. And so we need to do that. And even though my cross is nothing like the cross of the Son of God, I can contribute my sacrifice, and it makes my life more meaningful as a bishop, as a man, as a member of the body of Christ. If you're not a little experiencing the pain a little bit of of nails, you may have be, you may be running from that cross. But the the cross is where we <laughs> join we join with Christ. And uh, and where it gives our life meaning to lay our lives down for, you know, if you if you know, if you're going to the get there's the guy in the black pickup tr truck right now driving down the road, you know, and he's and he's he's wondering what is it going to take for him to have meaning in his life? Is he gonna, is it the next career move? Is it is it getting better at his golf score? Is it, you know, where is he going to find meaning? Well, Jesus said, if you want to find your life, you got to give it away. You got to lose your life to find your life. And men. You know that in the deepest part of your heart, you're called to be a hero. You know that. You want to be that hero. And the way you, the way you become that hero that God is calling you to be is by walking the walk with Jesus and, and, and abandoning yourself to his will and laying your life down for those that you love. As we say in Hawaii, uh, kuleana, uh, for the giving your life in stewardship for the, the people that God's called you to. We're talking with Bishop Strickland. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. 
Right. Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach Without your help, you can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. For those of you who don't subscribe to our weekly newsletter, it's so cool. We have a special message for the mama bears, special message for the man cave guys, and then we also release the, the video of, of uh, that day's, that night's radio show on, that this goes out on Saturday mornings, and all kinds of other stuff. We're going to be hosting a retreat here in Waikiki Beach on December 7th through the 11th. We want to invite you to bring your whole ohana, bring everybody, and uh, we'll have cigar night for the men. My wife's going to teach women the hula, but we're going to go really deep with the Lord. We're going to go deep in the virtues. So go to our website, deepadventure.com. If you subscribe to our newsletter, you'll find out all about the, the luau and the retreat, and you'll also uh, get a free copy of my latest book, the audio version of the latest book, uh, which you'll be able to listen to. We're talking with Bishop Strickland. We're talking about um, the need for, for manly for, for manliness, the need for uh, servant leadership. You know, Bishop, uh, the book of Nehemiah, uh, kind of a boring book. At, when you, when you, if you first read it, it's like Nehemiah comes back to, to Jerusalem and says, you guys got to rebuild these walls. And then it just lists this man and his family rebuilt the wall from here to here. And this man and his family, and, and names that you can't pronounce, right, rebuilt the wall from here to here and here to here and just goes around the walls of the temple. And, you know, it's really interesting that the Bible, that God would take that kind of time to mention each man and his ohana, each man in the domestic church, that that's the key to rebuilding the wall. And then when, the, when they began to be successful, they'd come under attack. So a man would stand there with a shield and with a spear protecting one man while he was building. And those who were carrying supplies would, carry their, would have their sword drawn and carry supplies on their back or in their other arm. But it was, it was men together with their families and men joining with other men. There's a man in my, our man cave right now that's really struggling. And he's too embarrassed to, to come to, to, be, to, to participate in the man cave because he's struggling. Uh, God, God doesn't have lone wolves. 
You know, we need to we need to come together. And uh, guess what, dudes? We're all bozos on the same bus. We all got the same problem. If you think you're if you think you're special and you're the only one that feels depressed or anxiety have anxiety or, or lonely or don't have direction in your life. Uh, you're the perfect. You're the perfect person to join. That man is you, or uh, the Exodus ninety, or the, the local men's group that you have, or join the man cave, and we'll help you st- help you start a local men's group too. But men, we need to come together. You know, every month I have uh, Bishop Strickland. We have these cigars called the, the Seven Virtue Cigars, which is how I went deeper in my faith was by having a cigar and reading G.K. Chesterton and Augustine and all that stuff. Thank God for cigars. But we, we have cigar night. We have a shot of whiskey. We have cigars. We're not allowed to talk about politics. We just talk story about the Lord. And, and in, the, in these cigars, if you unpeel the label, each one of the seven different blends has a different virtue and a description of it. And we talk about that. Men, we need to have fellowship again with one another. Bishop, what would you say to the, these men who uh, about bringing their bring, getting together as men and and growing together, helping each other. Absolutely, I, I truly believe the. Uh, you talk about building a wall in in Nehemiah. The the domestic church are the building blocks of a renewal of our civilization, and we need a renewal of our civilization. So I would encourage every man and every woman, and if they're couples listening, the two of you together, the man and the woman the model that God has given us, the only model of marriage is one man, one woman committed for life. And uh, to really make that domestic church, that that community, um, ohana is the word mm-hmm. that you use mm-hmm. in Hawaii, uh, but to really make that something that is your focus. That's where your sacrifices start. That's where your your love begins. That's, that's the seedbed for your your family. Um, we need that and we need we need each other. What occurs to me, um, I have a, a great devotion to the to the sacred heart of Christ mm-hmm. and to the Immaculate Heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary. I like to add in the the chaste heart of Saint Joseph in this year of Saint Joseph. Mm-hmm. That is the original domestic church. Um, That's right. There's a, a papa bear and a mama bear mm-hmm and the Son of God. Mm -hmm. And you see, even though there's not a lot about St. Joseph in this year of St. Joseph, everybody's mining everything the saints have said, what the scriptures do say. And one of my favorite aspects of St. Joseph is that most of what he did was hidden. And that's a very manly reality. Mm -hmm. For you as a dad, I, I could guess that much of what you've done to serve your family and to take care of your wife and children, they don't even know. Mm-hmm. And as a man, you don't need to broadcast it. You don't need to get the the dad of the year or the husband of the year award. Your, your reward, your award is in seeing your children flourish, Amen. seeing your wife in her happiness. Mm-hmm. That's your award. Um, and in St. Joseph is the Papa Bear and the Holy Family gives a great model of pouring yourself out, Mm -hmm. not taking center stage, Mm -hmm. being there to serve. And what a Mm -hmm. wondrous service he offered. He's Mm -hmm. the first man that literally held the body of Christ Mm -hmm. in the world. And I take that to heart as a man who's privileged to hold the body of Christ in the form of consecrated bread as I celebrate Mass. You know, Archbishop Chaput, I was listening to him few years ago at the Napa Institute and someone asked him so what's what's a good new program for evangelization and his answer was so profound get married have lots of children raise them up in the Lord that's what you said that's that 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 domestic church is God's way and it's not just the way of building uh, the word economy I think the root word of it is family so so it's not just to build the church, but it builds civilization, is based on that bedrock of, of the family. And you know, Father, men will come to me and say, you know, I, I see you're this adventurous guy. You do all these skydive, run with the bulls, surf all over the world. Um, yeah, I guess I do that. I've lived long enough. I, I've done that kind of stuff. But they'll say, I, I'm torn between my family and adventure. And I tell them, what could be the greater greater adventure 
than bringing into existence an eternal being and serving them and helping them and your wife what well, greater adventure of there than to be a father? I mean, I actually get to call myself father, which is what God the Father is. I get to be that. What greater adventure is there than to be a dad, to be a father, and to lay down your life for your family and for your wife? And what I would add there is I'm sure there may be, like you mentioned, a man that doesn't feel comfortable coming because he's struggling. Like you said, we're all struggling. Get over it and recognize that in the struggle, a lot of times is where you can grow stronger and really provide what what you need and what others need. That's right where Enter God meets you. Enter into the struggle. Don't shy away from it. Well, Father, can you, uh, Father Bishop Strickland, would you pray for that person now? We have men that just happen to turn up to this channel on the radio, and this is, message is getting through to them, and maybe they've known the Lord, or maybe they've never even been in a church. Can you pray for them to dedicate their lives to experience that, that uh, first moment uh, with the Lord or to rededicate their lives to the Lord? Can you lead them in that prayer? Sure, absolutely. Almighty God, we ask your blessing for any men and women listening that we may allow the word of God and the truth of our faith to resonate in our hearts and minds, that those who are troubled may find the light of the Holy Spirit guiding them and the strength of the Son of God who suffered, died, and rose for us all. May your word strengthen us and may the sacraments guide us as the guideposts that they are, signs of the life of your Son. Here with us, body and blood, soul and divinity, healing, teaching, forgiving, and guiding us in his light. We ask your blessing in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Think of that scripture, Who have I in heaven but thee, O God? And there is none I desire on this earth beside thee. My flesh and my heart fail me, but you are my strength, and you are my portion forever. Bishop, you have so much going on. I wanted to talk about Veritas Splendor, what's happening there. We can't talk about that. But I do know that you have... Uh, YouTube videos and you have a website. Can we direct people there because we've run out of time? Sure. Bishopstrickland.com and also stphilipinstitute.org, two websites that are part of the Diocese of Tyler. And then I know on YouTube, I think there's a Bishop Strickland channel or what is that exactly? What is it called? Well, it's a Bishop Strickland hour with um, the radio. Guadalupe Network carries it, and uh, Terry Barber, I imagine you know Terry. Or I heard know. of that rookie. <laughs> yeah, he's awesome. He is He is awesome. I got to speak with him, be on the same uh, conference with him a long time ago. But uh, And then also you the masses. You have masses there, too. So. Yeah. Live stream, noon mass, um, the, the best thing I do, celebrating at Christ's altar. Praise God. Bishop, we got to go. Um, we have a we have a something that we do here. We say aloha to everybody. But before we do that, can you give uh, your your blessing to us all, and then we'll say we'll we'll give a aloha shout. Sure, my mighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And you know, in Hawaii, the word ha means breath, and we say aloha, which means to give breath. That means to mm-hmm. to share breath. We don't shake hands. You, sh- you share breath here. And it's a way of saying love, to give love. And Jesus said, my peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. And he breathed his Holy Spirit on his disciples. And I know we had Vincent, uh, Father Vincent Lampert here, and he said one of the things he does dur- during an exorcism is just go, whew, just blow <laughs> the breath of the Holy Spirit. And so we say, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. <laughs> Thank you, Bishop Strickland. Good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell.